Hi guys, this is IGCSE O Level Chemistry, Paper 12, November 2015, Question 1. Which change of state takes place during evaporation? So the options are gas to liquid. A gas turning to a liquid is called condensation. Next we have a liquid turning to a gas. When a liquid turns to a gas, it undergoes evaporation. The next option is liquid to solid. When liquid freezes, it turns to solid. So this process is called freezing. And the last one is solid to gas. So when a solid goes directly to gas without the liquid state being there in the middle, this is known as sublimation. So the question asks, which change of state takes place during evaporation? So the change of state that takes place during evaporation is liquid turning to a gas, which makes option B the correct option for this question. Question two, the diagram shows apparatus being used to demonstrate how the rate of a chemical reaction changes with temperature. So we have a reaction mixture with a thermometer placed in it and a delivery tube to collect gas over water in a measuring cylinder. Which statement must be correct? The reaction is endothermic. We have no idea whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. That will only be uh, obtained after the reaction has started and it has stated on the thermometer whether the temperature increases or decreases. The reaction is exothermic. Same as the case for endothermic. The reaction produces a gas. Yes, that can clearly be seen because we have a delivery tube going from the conical flask right into the measuring cylinder with water in it. And the reaction produces an acid. This cannot be uh, obtained from the given set of apparatus. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option C. Question three, the table shows the nucleon number and the number of neutrons in one atom of isotope W, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so W, X, Y, and Z. Number of neutrons are different, which makes the nucleon number also different. So W, which statements about W, X, Y, and Z is correct? W and X are isotopes of the same element. W and X are the isotopes of the system. So we need to subtract the number of neutrons to find out the number of protons. If they are the same, then they would be isotopes. So 35 minus 18 is equal to 17. And 37 minus 20 is equal to 17. So since the number of protons in W and X are 17, which means they have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons, which makes them isotopes. So this statement is correct. Let's check the other statement as well. X and Y are isotopes of elements in the same group of the periodic table. X and Y are isotopes of elements in the same group. Okay, so X, we've already worked out Y, we have 39. So 39 minus 20 would give us a value of 19. Now, if we have 17 protons, this is chlorine according to the period table. And with 19 protons, this is potassium. Chlorine belongs to period three and group seven and potassium belongs to period four and group one. So this statement is incorrect. Next, Y and Z are isotopes of elements in the same period of the periodic table. Okay, so Z has 40 as the nuclear number and 22 neutrons, which makes 40 minus 22 equals 18 protons. So if it has 18 protons, so 18 would be argon. It is argon. And it says Y and Z are in the same period. Now Y is potassium which belongs to period four and Z is argon, which belongs to period three. So they're not in the same period of the periodic table. And the last one is Z has a higher proton number than Y. 
the num proton number of z is 18 and that of y is 19 which makes this statement incorrect as well therefore option a is the correct option for this question question four compound x melts at 801 degree celsius and is a good electrical conductor when dissolved in water Compound Y boils at 77 degrees Celsius, is insoluble in water, and is a non-conductor of electricity. Which type of bonding is present in X and in Y? So X has a high melting point and is an electrical conductor when dissolved in water, so it cannot be covalent. It has to be ionic. So this eliminates options A and B. And Y has a lower boiling point. It is insoluble in water and it is a non-conductor, making it a covalent compound eliminating option D and making option C the correct option for this question. Question five, what do the nuclei of H11, nucleon number and uh, atomic number, hydrogen atoms contain? The nuclei of H11, so H1 and one. So this is the proton number. So it contains one proton and this is the nucleon number. So it would be one minus one equals zero neutrons. And since the proton number is one, it will also contain one electron. So the question is, what does the nuclei contain? Nuclei does not contain electrons. It will contain one proton only. So the options are electrons and neutrons. So there are no neutrons present and no neutrons uh, in the nuclei, we don't have electrons. So electrons are not there, protons are there, neutrons only are not there, protons only are there. So there's only one proton in the nucleus. Therefore, D is the correct option for this question. Question six, the electronic structures of atoms X and Y are shown. So X only has one electron and Y has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. And Y belongs to group one, two, three, four, five. This belongs to group five. And X belongs to group one. In fact, X only has one electron. So X is hydrogen and Y has seven electrons. So Y is nitrogen. X and Y form a covalent compound. What is the formula of X? So the covalent compound formed between nitrogen and hydrogen would be ammonia, NH3. So nitrogen is represented by Y, so we would write Y. And hydrogen is represented by X, so we would write X and we would include 3. So YX3 is the correct answer for this question. Now let's look at which option has this present. So XY5 incorrect. X y3 is incorrect xy is incorrect x3y is the same as yx3 which makes this correct therefore option d is the correct option for this question question 7 the relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 when calculating relative atomic mass which particle is the mass of a chlorine atom compared to so the definition of relative atomic mass is it is the mass of an atom compared to one twelfth the mass of a carbon twelve atom, which means we compare it to a carbon twelve isotope of carbon. So the options are a neutron, no, a proton, no, an atom of carbon twelve, yes, an atom of hydrogen, no. Therefore, option C is the correct option for this question. Question eight. The diagram shows the electrolysis of concentrated hydrochloric acid and concentrated aqueous sodium chloride using carbon electrodes. At which electrode is hydrogen produced? Okay, so in the case of concentrated hydrogen hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride, so we have uh, the positive electrode which is the anode, and we have the cathode. Same thing with concentrated aqueous sodium chloride. We have the anode and we have the cathode. So, in concentrated hydrochloric acid, at the anode, we have production of chlorine gas because 
Cl minus will be converted into Cl2 by losing electrons. And at the cathode, we've got 2H positive plus 2 electrons giving us hydrogen gas. So we have hydrogen gas produced at electrode 2. Now, for uh, concentrated aqueous sodium chloride, since it is concentrated, we will have production of chlorine gas at the anode because two moles of chloride ions will convert into chlorine gas by releasing two moles of electrons. And at the cathode, we have got two moles of H positive gaining two moles of electrons and forming hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas is being produced on electrodes two as well as electrode four. So at which electrode is hydrogen produced? Electrode one only? No. At electrode one, chlorine gas is produced. Electrodes one and three. On both the electrodes, chlorine gas is produced. Electrode two only? Electrode two is correct, but we also have electrode four on which hydrogen is being produced. So this is an incomplete statement. And electrodes two and four, yes, these are the two electrodes where hydrogen gas is being produced, making option D the correct option for this question. Question nine, the diagram shows a section of an overhead power cable. Okay, we've got ceramic holding the cable. We've got aluminum and steel wires rounded together. This statement explains why a particular substance is used. Aluminum has a low density and is a good conductor of electricity. Yes, that is why it is used in overhead electric cables. Ceramic is a good conductor of electricity. No, it is a good insulator. Steel can rust in damp air. No, if it is stainless steel, it will not rust in damp air. And steel is more dense than aluminum. Uh, steel is more dense than aluminum, yes. But uh, that is not the reason why it is used here. So the correct use written is the use of aluminum because it has a low density. So it can be used in overhead electric cables and it is a good conductor. That is why it is used in electric cables. So this makes option A the correct option for this question. Question 10. Hydrogen can be used as a fuel. Which properties of hydrogen would be advantages and which would be disadvantages? Okay. So, hydrogen is expensive to produce. This is a disadvantage. Hydrogen reacts exothermically with oxygen. So, it produces energy. So, this is an advantage. And uh, when hydrogen burns, a greenhouse gas is not formed. Yes, because H2O is produced as a byproduct. So this is an advantage because this is an environmentally friendly use of hydrogen as a fuel. So the advantages are two and three and the disadvantages one only. So one and two, and this is written completely opposite. One is a disadvantage, two is an advantage. One is a disadvantage, three is an advantage. Three is not a disadvantage. Two is also not a disadvantage. Two and three are advantages. One is a disadvantage. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option D. Question 11. 